is Friday, 14th of October. Cooking here in Northern California again. This is it. Indian summer has hit us and uh, it's been very toasty the last few days. So I hope everybody else is having a good fall, start to the fall in uh, whatever part of the world you happen to be. Well, of course, if you're on the other side of the equator, well, you know the drill. We're heading into spring. So, um, we had a couple of really cool tunes this week, and I really have had fun um, messing around. Oh wait, we didn't do this one. I might. Anyway, I have had fun messing around with these, these heart tunes, and this week we came out with Dog and Butterfly in a couple of different versions. So uh, many of you know my uh, student Fred, who if you've been uh, if you've been following the Fly on the Wall lessons, Fred is one of the stars of that. Lessons with Fred are just really fun, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the stuff up there. But a few weeks ago, he wandered in and asked about that particular tune, and I was already, it was already like on my radar. I said, oh, I'm going to have to do Dog and Butterfly. And then he came in and said, hey, I've been trying to figure out Dog and Butterfly. So the lesson you see in the Fly on the Wall with Fred doing Dog and Butterfly was really the first time we'd uh, even talked about it, and, and I uh, didn't show him all the nuances of it in the beginning. But the next day, I listened to it a little bit more, and, and you know, we found all these cool little things that Nancy does in there. So it's just some nice things that, of course, elevate the level up to a little higher degree of difficulty. So I recommend with that lesson, practicing just strumming through it first, get the chord progression down before you try to throw in all the little fancy stuff that Nancy is uh, really good at. So uh, let's see, then we had the world of John Lennon. Some people thought that was hold your head up. It's the same lick. Except, of course, John did it in E flat with the use of a capo and then moved it up into E with the use of another guitar and double tracking and all that kind of stuff. But some pretty neat things in, in Woman, too, when we talk about modulating, which is a thing that happens to a lot of songs to make them a little bit more interesting and to up the intensity. Lots of songs in the Target program do this. Morning Has Broken, uh, Lodi. Anyway, we don't have the gambler in there, but that's another good example of one that does that. Well, here's another one. I have to get to that one someday. So, and Friday today, oh man, kind of took a page out of the John Prime book with um, Angel from Montgomery, and we looked at both a quick look at the way Bonnie Raitt did it as well. Kind of different than, than John's version, a little bit, uh, a little bluesier and, and stuff, but, but that one was sort of inspired by some of the stuff that members had been asking for on the forum, which was questions about songs that use borrowed chords or chords from neighboring keys, and um, Angel from Montgomery is a good example of that. There's a few more of those in the, in the pipeline, so uh, keep, an, keep an eye out for those. Uh, interesting thing happened with Ed, too, and, and uh, many of you have seen the Fly on the Wall videos of my student Ed. He always comes in with great questions, as, as they all do. i got to tell you, I love every one of my students. And uh, Ed started asking about seventh chords or, and diminished chords and augmented chords, and it turned into a very long theory lesson. And I know some of you had uh, probably learned a lot from that one, because there's a lot of info in that. So um, that was the other this week's other Fly on the Wall video was Ed talking about seventh chords, augmented chords, and diminished chords, and the navies here, or the marines, or something. Anyway, um, and then, oh, Jack, we got back to a little really cool thing with Jack Van Breen from Guitar Showcase, talking about how to get a good deal on guitar. It's a little different than getting a good deal on a used car. You know, you don't go in and kick the tuners or anything, so it's, uh, but he had some really good advice, so I hope you guys have seen that in our, in our On the Beat side. We had a review of Let It Be. Now our, our longtime member buddy had, does a fabulous job with just about everything that he puts up there, but there's always stuff you can add to a song to make it, to take it up to the next level. And so there are a few little subtle of, little subtle uh, recommendations, I guess, that I had to, uh, for him to, to embellish it a little bit. So, uh, but it, in general it was, it was really good. So. Something I forgot to mention last week. For any of those non-Target members that like their songs in packs, we released a five-pack of Bob Seger stuff. Looking at things like Still the Same, You'll Accompany Me, Night Moves, Fire Lake. So I uh, hope uh, Bob Seger fans have a chance to, to grab the Bob Seger five-pack 
this week as well. There were some really other cool things going on on the forum that I just want to bring up because um, I got a little involved with, um, oh, I didn't answer this question because the answers came through, but somebody had asked about playing things exactly in time or playing them like not quite in time. Well, not quite in time can mean a lot of things. That could also mean not quite musical at all, or it can mean making something much more musical. So there are a lot of subtleties that are involved in in when you exactly play notes and yes the beats in most songs need to be fairly flexible or a little flexible so some good good advice and comments and recommendations from some of our uh, a lot of our members talking about that the uh, also notice something cool I want to bring up to the recommend a lesson section because I saw a couple of requests this week for things one of which is already in the recommend a lesson section <laughs> And yes, I will be getting to uh, whatever that song is. Venus? Shocking Blue? Uh, sometime in the near future. It's, it's uh, definitely on my hit list, and uh, I know people have been waiting for anything else by, by Shocking Blue. Can you name another song of theirs? Who's got it? Um, and there was another request that, that was interesting. Oh, somebody was asking about this. A quick answer to the request for Cocaine Blues was that it's Dave Van Ronk's version is so similar to Reverend Gary Davis's because he took lessons from Davis. Well, he was uh, influenced heavily by Davis. As a matter of fact, there's a famous story, well, I don't know how famous this is, probably nobody watching this has ever heard this story, but of Dave Van Ronk, uh, I think the song was Candyman, but it could have been Cocaine Blues. But Dave Van Ronk was riding in a cab with the Reverend through New York City, probably on the way home from a gig of Reverend Gary Davis says, I'm sure, and uh, they're sitting in the back of the cab, and Gary Davis was playing, let's say it was either Candyman or Cocaine Blues, so I've got the facts, don't matter at all, but you may have been doing this. I think it was Cocaine Blues, but um, uh, getting back to the story, that uh, Davis was playing this song in the back of the cab as they're driving through Manhattan, and he was playing it for a very long time, just quietly sitting there with his eyes closed, running through, messing around with Cocaine Blues. And Van Ronk kind of appreciated it for a little while, but ten minutes into it, it was getting a little old. And he's wrestling with the fact that, oh, should I? Oh, I'm here with the legendary Reverend Gary Davis. Do I ask him to play something else? Um, and he says, no, 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 I can't, I can't interrupt the master. <laughs> Ten minutes later, he's getting even more irritated, or more mm, uh, reaching the end of his rope. And he finally decides that, that, okay, this is driving me nuts. I don't care how famous he is, this, I, I gotta stop, he's killing me with, this, with the repetition of this same song. He finally decides that, okay, I'm gonna do something about it. Well, he reaches over and nudges Reverend, who is fast asleep. Wakes him up out of a sound sleep. And he stopped playing. He was playing sound asleep in the back of the cab, the same thing over and over and over. So, anyway, that's my Dave Van Romp story for today. The, um, so the tune, if you want to play it, all you got to do is play it the way my lesson is. Turn the bass around. Play them backwards, and you got it. There's Dave's version. So. I think that's it for today. Uh, some really interesting things coming up next week, and as usual, can't tell you about them. Steve Howe? Nah. Okay, off to a weekend of softball. I'm tired of this, but must be done. So we'll check back next week, the 21st. Have a good midweek of October, and I'll see you then.